house now to go to the Wiley Inn and it's a very gloomy day um, it's you know raining and dark but we'll make our way there to stop work just arrived at the inn and as you can see my hair is probably all frizzy um, it's very um, cloudy but there's a beautiful water feature right there which is the water fountain um, in the video it doesn't seem as big but in person it's huge uh, I parked my car and now I'm gonna head into the inn to drop off my bags Located in Beverly, Massachusetts, the Wiley Inn and Conference Center is located at Endicott College. The inn has 91 guest rooms, which features a flat TV screen, toiletries, hair dryer, complimentary Wi-Fi, and 24 hours fitness center. I want to point out that the inn is a 3.5 star accommodation rating. This used to be dorms that was later converted into an inn. The conference center has a welcoming area with a receptionist available from 9 to 5 p.m. The meeting rooms are equipped with TV screen, projector connection, flip charts, sticky notes, pens, and notepads. They have a dedicated snack area with beverages at all times, and the bathrooms are available on both floors. If you did not know, I work full-time for a global nonprofit organization that teaches entrepreneurship and financial literacy to kids and young adults. One of my responsibilities is to effectively organize and manage all board-related and executive events. As soon as I arrive to any of my events, I go directly to the meeting rooms to ensure the documents are printed and are set up on the tables, as well as ensuring that the technical aspects of the meeting is working properly and connected to the devices. <music> of hosting an event at the Wiley Inn are these inside tunnels which connects the inn to the conference center and the conference center to the event hall. It is late October in Massachusetts and the weather is cold and wet. This ensures that the guests stay inside as they transition from one location to the other. I'm now making my way to the event hall called Tapper Manor to check in on breakfast for all those attending the event. <music> breakfast is done and the meeting starts, I find myself a spot and just catch up on emails and continue to plan future events. Guys, I wanted to show you the upstairs because they also have like a full, like not a full kitchen, but a, a good snack kitchen here um, so that if people are on this floor, they don't have to keep going downstairs, which is nice. Um, the, I know that this conference room is huge. It's currently closed, but um, it has its own elevator. I'll just quickly show you because it's a little dark in here, but I'll show you some of the breakout rooms they have upstairs, which it's great for, you know, uh, fast sessions, like 30 minute sessions, breakouts, um, small teams. It has, all the rooms here has their own TV screens, which is nice because just makes everything easy when using a computer they have their dry board erasers so all of these rooms are here it also has um, a bath its own bathroom on the second floor so it's just great not having to keep going the upstairs downstairs but um, here you'll see that you can see downstairs that's where I was sitting
so for a private event it's actually really nice even for a bigger amount of attendees than what I have here I have 18 people here so as you can see you have three tables of six but um, if you want to do a larger event it would also be a great space it has its own private bar and um, we did a set menu uh, three choices of um, first course, three choices for second course, and two choices for dessert. But overall, I really like the space. We also did a set charcuterie board, cheese, and I have my wine. Okay guys, it's day two. As you can see, the sun has not yet come up, but I just want to show you a quicker look of the fountain. So beautiful. But um, today is going to be just a half day of meetings. So we'll have breakfast, lunch, and then everybody departs to the airport. But I'm up early. I just got to the conference center and we're just gonna ensure that everything is all set, that they have all the materials they need. And yeah, let's go. We did an activity last night. We asked them to take pictures and they did even a video. So as you can see, coffee's already here. And um, there are some you know, cereal, fruits, parfaits, but this is not the official um, breakfast. We have another breakfast at the other hall, which is called Tepper Manor. to take a little walk there is Tepper Manor um, but look at how beautiful they have this back um, yard trail that leads directly to um, the ocean so I wanted to take a little time to show you guys how beautiful it's here and yeah look <gasps> absolutely stunning everyone I hope you can hear me well I am at the beach right now I'm finalizing the event there might be a little bit of wind here wind here but I'm finalizing the event and I just thought I would come in and share some of my top tips on planning events this could apply to birthday parties it could apply to you know corporate events there's so many different ways that you can apply these seven steps and um, it just has worked wonders for me and I just thought I would share with you but the most important thing is just to prepare yourself as much as you can so that you're not overwhelmed and the step number one is to just define very clearly your objectives um, and just ask yourself what you are hoping to accomplish uh, for the specific event 
it, you usually ask yourself why, like why this event, why it's happening now, and and you just align the objectives to you know the agenda and everything that's going to happen. Step number two is just to choose your location. Now, choosing your location is very important and a lot of uh, oftentimes I see people not doing the right research so you know you have to ask all the questions you can to the venue ahead of time and that goes into like asking the food and beverage minimum asking trans how transportation works how uh, if they have parking if parking is paid if parking is free all of those questions needs to be um, answered ahead of time you also need to align the venue with the core plan for your event. So if you're doing a conference, for instance, you need to ensure that the conference agenda aligns with the specific venues that you are um, renting. But if the conference room has the equipment that you need, if, the, if they offer any type of staff and assisting on site, things like that is imperative to get done and, and do all that research ahead of booking and, and signing any contracts. Um, step number three is just to set a date and picking that date is so important for to maximize the attendance of your event so make sure that you check any conflicting holidays any key calendar events that could inter um, interfere with your event and you know you just want to make sure that people are able to attend and and checking for all of those conflicts is essential now um, you know, events are usually tricky because you, you can plan for a certain portion of it, but for another portion of it, it's really just roll with the punches. But um, step number four is to create a plan and create a timeline because this will ensure that all the details are taken care of and that um, it will help you visualize everything that's to come. Uh, it's okay for plans to change, that happens, but you do not want you know, 99% of your event plan to just be brand new on the day of. So preparing yourself is the key. Um, step number five is just issuing the invitations. Now you have to remember that if you send out invitations too soon, too early, people may forget about it. And if you issue it too late, people might not be able to attend. So just ensure that you pick a, the good time frame. I usually send out invitations at least a month ahead. I like to give a month in advance and then I send a reminder two weeks in advance. All the details should be included in the invitation, including the date, the location, the time, the RSVP details, the dietary restriction request. Make sure that all of that detail needed is on the event. Now, of course, for different types of events require different types of instructions. So just um, make sure you brainstorm that before you click that send. Now, step number six is the actual day of the event. I arrive early. I make sure that everything is in order. I remember to welcome guests and speakers. I make them feel comfortable and I'd let them know that I'm point of contact. So if they have any questions or concerns, they can reach out directly to me. I also prepare something ahead of time called the run of show, which has location information, topics of presentation, speakers information, all the details needed so that the entire staff and team on site knows what's happening and when it's happening and who they have to reach out to. Now, I give this information to the production team, to the speaker, guest speakers, videographers, waiters, even the food chef should have one of these so that there's no surprise for anybody at any point. Uh, you also need to ensure that signage is available and very well placed because you want attendees to be able to relocate and move around very comfortably. Um, if, if you don't have these things, you have constant amount of people coming to you for guidance and some of these questions are very easily, you know, assessed just by, by having these signage available for people. So you want to make sure that you're alloc allocating your time um, efficiently in these events. So the more information you give out ahead of time and the more signage so that people know where to move is key. Now, the last step is just to, after the event is done, is to just stop and evaluate everything that you've done. You need to take time to reflect um, how you managed your time, how you maximized efficiencies, and, and just learn from those mistakes that you made and fine tune 
any um, planning or preparation skills for, so that your future events can be highly successful as well. I hope this has been helpful for you. I know it's windy in here, so I'm so sorry, but um, I mean, this is a beautiful view. Um, if you have any questions, please leave questions down in the comment box below. You know, I this is what I do for my full-time job, and then I just love sharing these kind of information on YouTube. But I also, if you have any other suggestions in terms of planning events, leave it down below because I'm sure everybody will like to see it, including myself. But yeah, I'll leave it in here and I'll see you next time. Bye.